Hey guys, welcome back to No Case Your Name. It's me, Ella, and today I thought it'd be fun to share with you guys some of my crochet books. Especially since I'm co-hosting the May 2020 Stash Buster with Crystal over at Chronicle Crochet, and that'll be linked below. I will link my video about it below and her channel, um, so check them out. So, my theme this month is to use patterns that you already own. So, you're kind of busting your yarn stash while also busting your pattern stash. And so that idea is like, you know, from magazines you have, from books you have, or from digital copies that you have on your computer or phone or whatever. So I pulled out a lot of my crochet books <laughs> and uh, I thought I'd just show you guys um, the books that I have. They'll all be linked below if you're interested in purchasing any of these. Or, or if you already have them, let me know because I think it's cool. When I show like an old book that I found on a thrift store and a bunch of people say that they have it, I think that's neat. But, um, and if I come across the book that I made something from, I will kind of review that a little bit. And, uh, yeah. So, anyways, I just got a big stack here. I pulled them out of my shelf. And I'm just going to go through them and show them to you guys and talk about them. <laughs> this one I got as a gift recently. It's called Around the, Cro uh, Around the Corner Crochet Borders. And I've been wanting this. This, is, this was actually living in my Amazon wish list for probably a year or so. And I got it as a gift, so that's really neat. And this is a really awesome book. There are tons of beautiful... Oh my gosh, that one was so cool. Did you see that? Oh, I'll have to find it later. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful borders. I mean, look at them. I have made a couple out of this since I've been gifted it. Just look at them. <laughs> so many, like, more than I could ever think to do to make something look awesome. Like, especially if you have, like, a plain corner-to-corner corner afghan or like a just a double crochet afghan if you just made something simple you could jazz it up with a fancy border look at all these so many beautiful borders now as you can see poking out the corner they do have the graphs but there's also the written instructions because um i'm not that good at reading graphs i've been trying to learn how to do that but it's not as easy to me as reading just a written pattern but every single one of these does have a graph and a written so that's neat it also has like a um a little what is that called a key of the colors so that you know um, which rounds which colors are like right here this purple one right here it's got all the colors listed there and then it's got the rounds that don't you use those colors I think that's really neat that's helpful but this is cool it's got so many does it say how many is in there 150 colorful creative crocheted edgings and it says with charts and instructions for turning the corner perfectly every time. <laughs> now, like I said, I have tried a couple of these and they are awesome. <laughs> and there's some in there that's like super nice. I wanna make that one. Let me find that again. Look at that. That would be so fun on the side of a blanket. It's a bunch of curly cues. I'm gonna have to use that on something. That is so cool. But there's a lot of um, fancy looking ones, lacy ones, solid ones. Ones with little, like I saw some right here with little flowers on it. That would be pretty. It's just all kinds of cute things. Tassels. So that's neat. I thought that was neat. And I'm so glad I got that gifted to me because, like I said, it's been on my wish list forever. <laughs> and um, I can't wait to use it more. I haven't really made any blankets lately, but um, I'm definitely going to pull that back out when I do and jazz it up with a neat um, border. Alright, this book right here. Cuddly Animals to Crochet. This I got at Joanne's or Michael's. I think Joanne's um, uh, last year, early last year or late the year before last, whatever it was, 2018. <laughs> I bought it. Um, I think it had like a coupon and I didn't really need anything. So I was just, I was like, hey, I'll just get another Emma Groomy book because I love Emma Groomy books. Um, I'm going to have a disclaimer about this. I did make one pattern in this and it was the bunny rabbit. I don't know if you guys remember it. It was white and pink. It was white with pink and gray little speckles. It was, I love this yarn. I made the bunny and I ended up donating the bunny to my craft fair that I did last year, last October. They asked everybody that had a booth to donate an item for them to auction off and I donated the bunny and it went over huge. People loved the bunny <laughs> and it was huge. It came out like almost three feet tall, I think. It was like two and a half feet tall or something. And this, this is a nice pattern. You know, I worked it out and I figured it out good, but the, the, the hands were written kind of odd, and, um, and it's just different people who write patterns have different styles. 
I was able to successfully make the bunny, but it was a slightly difficult thing. So I wouldn't suggest this for a beginner amigurumi maker. But if you've made a few, definitely. And there's a ton of super cute patterns in here. Each um, section has a picture of all the animals that's in it. Like right here, this, this section is called South America. It's got a sloth, a monkey, and some kind of lizard thing. I don't know what that is. <laughs> and then there's a section called Australia. It's got a panda, or Australia, Asia. <laughs> I can't read. A tiger and an elephant. There is an Australian one. Oh, here's the Australian one. I skipped it. <laughs> it's got a platypus, a kangaroo, and what are those things called? Is it a wombat? I can't remember if that's what it's called. <laughs> and then there's Africa. It's got a ostrich, a zebra, a hippopotamus, a giraffe, and a lion. I think that's ostrich. It might be an emu. <laughs> I don't know what the difference between the two are. And then... There is a farm category, which has a cow, a chick, or chicken, <laughs> a cat, a pig, a lamb, and a bee. That bee is so cute. <laughs> Where on earth did I get chicken from? I don't know. I'm still half asleep, I guess. And then the last, or it's actually the first category, <laughs> is forest. It's got a fox, an owl, the rabbit, a raccoon, and a little deer. So there's a lot of cute patterns in here, but I've only made the um, the one, the bunny rabbit. I do have the platypus <laughs> and the whale. Oh, I didn't show you the fish ones <laughs> marked because um, I want to make them, but I just haven't gotten around to it. And then there's a the water, which has an octopus, a whale, a frog, and a turtle. <laughs> so there's a lot of cute patterns in here. I'd love to make more of these. And um, I can't remember how much this was when I bought it. I think it was like 20 something and then I had a 50% off coupon that I could use on it. So it was, it came out to be, I think $12 when I bought it. So that's not that bad. All right. This next one was also gifted to me <laughs> and, um, I haven't made anything out of this yet, but I do plan on it. I want to make all of them. This one's called unicorns, dragons, and more fantasy and a McGroomy. And actually there's a second one coming out either May or June, I think. Uh, a brand new version so I'm looking forward to seeing that these are the patterns that's in it for a while um, this little guy went around like crazy and I've seen a lot of this made and recently a couple people's made that the Phoenix but yeah these are super beautiful patterns and I do want to make some of these I haven't made any of these yet though so I have no review for that <laughs> okay my next book on my stack is Whimsical Stitches. Now this I did talk about last year. I got it as a gift and then I was looking around on Amazon and it was on sale, like a really good sale at the time. It was like 10 bucks, I think. And a ton of people bought it and then everybody was making stuff for me. It was really neat that we were all working from the same book. But I did make um, the cupcakes out of this. I don't have that worked. Right here, they have a, a, a big version and a small version. And I made a couple of each of those. Um, I got them in my big amigurumi bag <laughs> to uh, put into a sale in the future. And I also made this little pie. Where's the picture? Here. I made a couple, well, I think I made one of the pumpkin pie. It's super cute. And I think that's all I made for this book so far. I don't think I've made anything else. But this has got a ton of cute and groomies. I mean, look at all the little pictures. I've seen people make these flowers, and I've seen people make these jellyfish. I want to make the little duck. <laughs> I have it marked. You can see it right there. It's marked. <laughs> Such cute. This is a well-written book. I really like it. The pictures are beautiful, and the wording is great and easy to follow, and I, I didn't have any trouble making the pie or the cupcakes. There's lots of pictures to help you, um, visually with the pattern if you're not that good at just distinguishing what people are saying it's a written word if you need more photos there's a ton of photos i'll just kind of show you real quick <laughs> a ton of photos um to help you get your pattern to come out the way it should be and uh yeah look at the little turtles there's so many cute pictures or patterns in that book this one um i'm going to show you but i couldn't find it on amazon i found the sequel <laughs> but i couldn't find this one because i think maybe it's sold out 
but um, this one was gifted to me also. Amigurumi Monsters. And uh, there's a second one called Amigurumi Monster 2. <laughs> and um, I haven't actually made anything out of this, but I know people who have. I know someone who is local to me. Her name is Kim, and she's made a ton of these. And from what I've seen of her work, they all come out, like, amazing. Here's on the back is some uh, of them. Super cute monsters. The only reason I haven't made any is just I just haven't had the time. Because I think they're adorable. <laughs> There's one that I was going to make, but I uh, haven't got around to it yet. I can't remember which one it was. I thought I had it marked, but I guess not. Here's some of them. It was this one because it was fuzzy. You make it with like fuzzy yarn and I thought that was so cool. But this one I've seen a lot of people make this one with the three eyes and this big one. Super cute monsters. All right, and then mm, some of my favorite books ever are the Zuma Grimmy books. I have three. I eventually want to get all of them. I've only bought one. I think this is the one I bought. This is seven, and then I was gifted eight and five. And I have made a few things out of these. These are super cute books. These are um, from different designers, and they just kind of put them all together. I think there's... 10 of them now maybe more than that but um they are all super cute amigurumis i just love all of them i want to make all of them i made the seagull i actually sold it at a craft fair it was my first item to sell at that craft fair i did last year i sold it for 15 dollars, which i thought was pretty good for a fairly small amigurumi and um the little girl who bought it kept calling it a chicken she was like two or three but her grandparents bought it for her and uh, she kept calling it a chicken, and I told them that it was a seagull, but they didn't care. They just wanted it because she wanted it. And uh, I was okay with that. I loved making it, and it turned out super duper, 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 duperty duper cute. I'm pretty sure the seagull is the whole reason I bought this book. And then I was gifted um, number eight, which has a bunch of key patterns in it, and I made the beaver he's completely done crochet wise i just haven't sewed him together yet <laughs> and it's just out of laziness i want to make the parrot i think that's so cool there are just so many adorable animals so here's number eight that's just some because there's 15 in here and there's 15 in this one this is number seven there's the single he's so cute and then amigurumi zoom amigurumi five here's some that's in there so cute. <laughs> That's the front of it. Peacock. Those are super nice books. Uh, I flip through them and like read through them. I have a bunch of marked that I want to make. I just haven't got around to doing it. But uh, I definitely love these books that I do. I love them enough that I want to collect them all eventually and have them all just in my stash. This one I shared recently. <laughs> um, I did make the chicken out of here. I'm sure most of you guys already know because um, that was a recent video. I made this chicken that's on a nest and it is a container. Um, I got this at my local thrift store, but it is available on Amazon, and I think some people said they found it on thrift books, and you could probably find it through other sources on the internet, but there's a lot of really cute patterns in here, and um, I bought it because it was a crochet book, and when I'm at the thrift store, I buy every crochet book, because if I don't like it, I can give it to someone who I think will, but I'm glad, I, I'm happy that I bought it just for this pattern right here, because I really enjoyed making that pattern, and it was a lot of fun, it's super cute, a lot of people loved it, so it'd be a good gift idea. And could maybe sell some in the future at a craft show. And uh, I'm happy with just paying for this book for that one pattern. So even if I never make another pattern out of this book, I'll be happy with that. But there are afghans and uh, pillows and little like doilies and um, crochet flowers. There's teddy bears, little baby stuff, gloves even, cardigans all kinds of stuff in this book so there's all kinds of things that you could make <laughs> if you bought this book but i'm i'm just happy with making the chicken and i do want to make another one i'll probably make a brown chicken and i don't know we'll see if we'll make any more chickens <laughs> i do love that book though i'm so glad i picked that up because i love that chicken pattern these two i also showed recently but i'm just pulling them out of my stash so this one i won in a giveaway and it's 101 easy scrap crochet projects and i was able to find it on amazon and i think I think it was on Thrift Books, too. And, uh, look, it's got a chicken, too. It's got a pig with a chicken. <laughs> this is so cute. This is the one that the bag lady is in. 
that I shared and a lot of people really liked it. I'm planning on making that soon. Let me find her. It's got cardigans and hats and all kinds of little amigurumi type things, baby booties. There she is. This is the bag lady. She is so cute. She's a plastic bag holder, so I definitely want to make that soon. But there's, you know, there's just a whole array of things. There's butterfly magnets, washcloths. There's a whole set of, like, um, farm animal head magnets. There's an apron pattern. A really cute pin cushion that looks like a little girl. I think you stick a doll out of it, but still cute. You're probably just making him a groomy girl. And this is another well written book. Uh, I've read through the patterns. You know, I always like to read a pattern before I make it so that I know if there's a mistake in it before I, you know, start making it. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably use this one this month for the May Stash Buster because I want to make the bag lady. <laughs> so this is probably going to be one that you'll see again in a future video because I'm going to make the bag lady and I'll share the book again at that time along with her. This one, I, again, I shared recently and it's another gift. <laughs> I got a lot of wonderful gifts, but it's called the 3D Granny Square and it's a hundred and yeah, it's a hundred crochet patterns for pop-up granny squares. So all of the granny squares in this book have some sort of 3D texture to them. I've made two, but they're the same ones. <laughs> And it is the sunflower one right here. I've made two of those. Um, and I plan on making probably four more. Because I'm going to make my mom a pillow cover. And um, I'm going to make mostly sunflower squares. And then maybe a couple of solid squares just to break it up. I might just do all sunflower. I don't know. But there's all kinds of super cute ones. There's food ones. There's animal ones. There's holiday ones. There's... It's mostly Christmas holiday, <laughs> but um, there's a spider one, which I really like. There's a Thanksgiving one. There's abstract ones with just like lines and squiggles, and there's tons of flower ones. And uh, it's just, there's a lot of really nice, uh, cute, there's beach themed ones. And uh, there's like farm animal ones, and then like zoo animals that you would see. And fruits and vegetables, just super cute. You could use a bunch of these just to make a blanket with or pillows and in between some of the square patterns there are patterns that you can um, make things with the squares like this is a square but they made little uh, hand warmers there's a pillow form which is where I got the idea to make the one for my mom there's a couple other things I can't remember let me flip through there's a, it's like a baby cube that they play with you can make that with any of these really you know there's a little purse that you, you use one of the squares and then you just crochet onto it to make it a little handbag. There's just a bunch of cute ones. There's uh, coasters and a towel holder, towel topper. So it's really cute. I think it's just a really cute book and the pictures are beautiful. <laughs> I really love when pictures and stuff in books are nicely done. It just makes you, it makes it more appealing. Yeah, so this is definitely a cute book to check out if you like making squares. Every time I see a bunch of squares like this, I think of Terry over at Yarn Joy because, was that 2018? I think it was 2018 that she did all those granny squares. She did like 300 and it was more than 65 because she did a couple extra ones too. And she made all those little afghans and um, I always think her every time I see granny squares. But I want to eventually maybe make all of these just because I think it'd be fun to go through all 100 of them. But so far, I've just made two of the sunflower ones, and I will be making more sunflower ones. And I want to make the spider one. There's a, let me get the picture of it. Because I really love Halloween, but there's not really any of the squares in this book that would go with it other than the pumpkin. But I might take the base of this person's pattern and make my own. Make like a little ghost or something. I don't know, I'm having a hard time finding him. Where is he? He's in the animal section. There he is. Look at him. Oh, that'd be so cute on a blanket. I made a Halloween square blanket. Um, was that last year? I can't remember if it was 2018 or 2019. I entered it in a fair last year, so it was last earlier last year that I made it. And it was by um, Maria's Blue Crown. And it was so bright outside. <laughs> it was so pretty. I love it. And I, I ended up lining it with um, flannel. 
fleece, whatever that stuff's called, and it turned out really beautiful, beautiful, and it's heavy and it's comfy, and I love it. And then the last book I pulled out, because this is all my books mostly, I got a couple more stitch um, dictionaries, but I thought I'd only just pull out one, so I just grabbed this one. <laughs> this one's called 101 Stitches for Afghans, but you know, you can use them for anything. And a good stitch guide. Everyone always, you know, this is a good thing to have for anything, because like if, even if you just ever make dishcloths with them, this has 101 different stitches, so you can make 101 different looking dishcloths or afghans or pillow forms or you could use them to create your own um patterns you can make your own cardigan patterns or vests or anything so it's i think it's always good to have a stitch dictionary why can i say that stick stitch di <laughs> stitch dictionary on hand and like i said i do have like three of them i can see two more just from setting here <laughs> and um I'm pretty sure they were all gifted. No, I bought this at Hobby Lobby on clearance. And then there's two other ones that were gifted to me. So, um, but yeah, I think you always need a stitch dictionary on hand. And I think this would totally count for the Stash Buster, uh, May 2020 Stash Buster thingy that I'm hosting. <laughs> because this is still a book that I own, you know, and if you own one too, then it counts. And you can make anything with the, the stitches that's in there. And here's some more. It's just really cool, I think. But yeah, so that's just some of my books that I thought I would share with you guys that I have in my stash that I might work from. There's definitely some amigurumi books. Well, I'm gonna be, I know I'm going to be working from this one. I want to make the bag lady. I'd love to make another chicken. Oh, so heavy. My zimigurumis, I'll probably use at least one of those to make amigurumi with. I want to make a monster. <laughs> I want to make some more stuff from this. Oh, it's getting heavy. I want to make um, that green thing, the second one up there. That looks like Dobby. I want to make him. <laughs> I'd like to make that bumblebee or the sheep. And then borders if I were to make a blanket. So, okay, it's so heavy. <laughs> I'm going to be using a lot of my books. And then this isn't even touching all my digital ones because I have so many digital patterns downloaded from Ravelry, from people's blogs, from people sharing them on Facebook, from all the giveaways people had recently because of the COVID-19. Everybody was giving away patterns for free because everybody's stuck at home. I got so many of them. So I, I have, I, oh gosh, I don't even want to admit how many patterns I have on my laptop. There's thousands. They are organized quite well though. I took a lot of time a few years ago and organized them by category. And some of them have subcategories. Like I have a clothing and in the clothing there's shawls, uh, cardigans, hats, scarves, you know, there's all these different categories in there. And, and even my amigurumis are separated by characters from like movies and video games to animals, to underwater animals, to monsters. You know, I got them all sorted really nice. So if I'm needing a pattern, I can look it up fairly easily, but there's still so many of them. And I do like to go through them every now and then and I'll look at a bunch of random ones. And if I don't think I'll ever make it, I do just delete it because there's no point in having a ton of stuff that you're never gonna make. But there's still a lot on there that I wanna make. So, um, and I know I'm probably never gonna make all of them because <laughs> I don't have that much time. But um, I don't know. It's fun to go through them, and it's definitely fun to find new ones. <laughs> and I do still have some whips over there, but I'm going to just ignore my whips because this month is all about working from books and patterns. That's what I'm telling myself in my head. <laughs> so um, I'm definitely going to use a lot of my books. I hope you guys have a bunch of books that you're going to use. And all of these ones that I showed today will be linked below if you're interested in purchasing any of them. Uh, I linked just from Amazon and because I wasn't able to find all of them, but I think one on Amazon and um then there's also the website called thrift books i order from there a lot I actually have to go to the post office and pick up some books today that i ordered from there they have all kinds of books for everything and they do have a bunch of crochet ones actually this one right here that i won when i won it the girl who who bought it and then gave it away bought this from thrift books and um yeah <laughs> and i also got one of the stitch dictionaries that day too but, uh, yeah, I just, I love books. I love these physical books. I love having them in my hand and just flipping through them. And, like, I love the, the font. You know, I'm just a weirdo. <laughs> I like fonts in books, and this one has a really nice one. And the pictures, like I said, I love it when they show the items in use. I just think that's neat because it's, you could see, you can, you can kind of get an idea of what you can do with it, you know, if that makes any sense. I don't know if that makes sense. It's like staging, like when people sell houses. But anyways... <laughs> I'm just blabbing now, but these are all the books that I have. I'm looking over there. I think all I have left over there is magazines, and then I have a binder full of printed patterns, 
and um, a couple more stitch dictionaries. So I'm good with the books. And um, let me know if you have any of these same books down below because I think it's fun when we, a lot of us have it because then we can like all well, work from them and it's kind of like we're all doing it together, you know. And uh, also let me know if you're going to go buy any of these because it'd be cool to uh, see what y'all buy, you know. We all like seeing what each other buys craft-wise. That's why we like doing hauls and stuff. So, uh, yeah, just let me know in the comments. <laughs> and also let me know if you're going to be doing the Stash Buster with me and Crystal this year. I've had a lot of new people join the Facebook group, and that's how you enter. And I'm assuming that's why. <laughs> so, um, there is an album on there already. And also, if you, if you don't know how to use Facebook or if you don't want to use Facebook, you can also email me. My email is in the description of pretty much every video. So, you can email me. Just make sure you put it in the subject that that's what it's for. It's for the Mace Stash Buster. That way, I can keep them all separated. But yeah, I'm going to hop off here, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.